to another episode of Redneck Island, but this time it is a very special episode because this is the finale, and I'm so excited. We have a full room right now, and I can't wait to tell you who's here. For those of you who are listening, for those of you who are watching can see, but sitting next to me in the studio, we have the superstar touted by Vince McMahon as the most profitable wrestler of all time. So if you've watched his career, right? <laughs> if you've watched his career, you know why he holds six WWE World Championships. So he carries with him a real strong passion, not just for wrestling, but life, which drives him to excel at anything he does. And currently, that is a new podcast called The Steve Austin Show on Podcast One airs twice weekly. I love it. I'm a fan. I follow it. So uh, in the studios with us, ladies and gentlemen, the Texas rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Woohoo! You always make me sound like a million dollars every time I come on this show. The second time I've been on this show, so awesome. that was a hell of a damn introduction. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank I'm glad you. to be back. Wow, it's great to have you back. I get a lot of emails from the cast members because uh, they are they are very connected with each other and they felt like there was a bond with you, Steve, even though when they got evicted or they got voted out uh, and they had to leave immediately, they they felt uh, that there wasn't a sense of closure. So before we get started, I'd like to give you a few names and maybe if you could think of something nice to say about a few of these people. <laughs> Would that be okay? Hell, I thought I was going to get a chance to cut a promo on them. You want me to say something nice about them? That's a whole different step and a whole different direction, but I'll work with you. Okay, well. I love these curveballs you always throw at me. <laughs> yeah, bring out the best in me. All right, well, Amnesty was the first to go. She was so, we didn't even get a chance to connect with her. She was gone like that. Was she, uh, did you get a chance to say anything to her before she left? No, gone like the wind. Uh, yeah. She came in, beautiful young lady, and got, well, she didn't get picked when we was drawing up the sides. And, hell, I had to kind of go back and start thinking about this show, because the first time I come on here, y'all break, break down this show like a bunch of scientists. I just hosted it. <laughs> Last night, I was live tweeting so much I could barely watch it. So, But anyway, Amnesty, uh, a real, really nice young lady. Yeah. Didn't get a chance to know her, didn't get picked on one of the sides, and so she rode off into the sunset, and I hope she's doing well. Bailey eliminated right after her. She uh, actually was blindsided, didn't see that one coming. Boy, I would have liked to have seen more of her. Mm, she was Bailey, a sometimes, you know, life's going to blindside you. Yeah. She got blindsided yeah. on Redneck Island. It does happen. And then Mike, we got to see Mike. He was the third one voted out. By the way, it was Mike that sent these koozies to us, FedEx, that Aww. we're drinking from. Isn't that hey, nice? Not Phil, but <laughs> she rode off into the sunset. Bailey got blindsided. Uh -huh. Poor Phil, you know, and yeah. Mike, you know, the exterminator, good cat. And Phil, tough cat. You gotta, you love this guy because he was tough. He gritted up, had a bad tooth. You gotta brush him damn teeth, Phil. I don't know how he got that abscess. <laughs> then blew his knee out. Tried to make a comeback. A valiant effort against uh, Cody and the yep. tug of war gimmick. Mm -hmm. So he kicked ass, yeah. but finally, you know, he got. Travis actually came our favorite girl. Uh, it was kind of she was a crowd favorite for yes. us, and that was oh, Woodle. Woodle. We love Woodle. Oh, I great. love Woodle. Woodle. She's <laughs> badass, man. You talk about competitor, man. She was game. That rope ladder gave her uh, problems on the, the when you run and jump and get the, the beer off the platform. But man, she kicked ass and dominated, and a sweetheart of a girl. Was, uh, Brandon. Uh, Brandon. Brandon. That's right. right. Stage, yeah. And Brandon kind of played a real low key role. I was really surprised with Brandon. One of his highlights was when he confessed that he was not going to put Lindsay's name on a can. I don't, do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was like, yeah. really, he was, uh, he just kind of played too many of his cards up front and then it cost him, mm. actually. After Brandon came, a real, what, do you remember? This, this was, wasn't it Stacy? Or no. Stacey? No. Candy. No, you guys, no. this was, unfortunately, he played a real... Oh, Philip. No, Joe. Oh. Joe played a really quiet game. Joe, I Joe was interesting, Cat, man. I tell you what, it seemed like he was juiced up about halftime. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's my fault for having too much alcohol on the island. But I'll tell you what, man, that guy gave it all he had, and he had a damn good time. So, good, uh, Joe, oh, if you're seeing this or hearing this, how, how are you? You did a damn good job. Yeah, Joe mm -hmm. made one, I think, one mistake, and that was asking Candy to do the dishes. <laughs> so uh -oh. was that like, was funny, that? though. Yeah, yeah. I didn't fly too good. <laughs> That was funny. She didn't like yeah. that. But um, speaking speaking of Candy, actually, she was the next one out, and she wasn't um, she wasn't voted out. She lost. Was the she food? Yeah, that was yeah the food after, one. after Joe came, Candy, and yeah. she couldn't eat. Shady burrito. Wow! Look what you did. <laughs> you lost a tough competitor because you put 
octopus in front of her and pig lips and oh, eyes. Oh, so awful. Yeah. Oh, my God. Nice. I'll tell you what, if, if we get lit up for season four, you guys, I'm going on record as you have my word and I'm going to make sure your catering has fresher food. <laughs> Swing a beer for the working man. Yes. 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 All right. Don't be we're gonna hold, no glory. We're going to hold you to it. We'll be back. <laughs> now, I don't want to get off Candy too fast because she was one of my favorite players. And, uh, you know, we, we take our job real seriously over here at After Buzz and breaking down the show. Absolutely. <laughs> and our job is to deliver the breaking news. And I've got some breaking news on Candy. Oh, no. She has just become officially engaged. Yay! Oh. Good. An incredible competitor because I honestly thought she got strategy. She knew how to. She made you know she was a little too outspoken, which I think caught caught got her in trouble with Misty. Uh, unfortunately, I think Misty didn't care for her being that outspoken. She came on our show, Steve, uh, not too long ago, and she was uh, emphatic about her position with uh, Bucket. She's just not a fan. Uh, unfortunately, she was fun. She was, she really was fun. fun. Yeah. I enjoyed her. Mm -hmm. She was very candid, very open and honest, and she put it all. She was there to win the money and not make friends and play the game. I mean, yeah. she's yeah. playing to win. Yeah. I, I, and yeah. she was a game competitor, to your point. <laughs> One of the cast favorites was Stacy, even though the editing didn't give us a chance to get to know her really well. The cast absolutely loved her, and yeah. she was actually beside herself when she had to put Brandon's name on a can. I mean, it really tore her up. Mm -hmm. But Bucket never forgave her. Like, to the very end, he held her, like, responsible for that although everyone is going to eventually have to put someone's name on a can right he for some reason couldn't forgive stacy of that um mm -hmm. we liked her did you like her i like stacy she is a gamer i mean again I, it's just hard for me not to like yeah. almost everybody here yeah. on this uh this list that a little egypt angelina is looking at <laughs> i have two worlds here with angelina <laughs> I, I like stacy she's a gamer she was a real deal she mm -hmm. was she was uh, authentic and uh, a, a nice country gal or oh, whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. some just regular, mm -hmm. non-athletic kind of guy, but weathered the storm, he was kind of the leader of the camp, and uh, not a pure athlete, so it, you don't have to be in that cold, Cody mode to, to win the thing. Win and, and as we saw, Jen from season one, yep. and uh, Lindsay from you know, Lindsay. This, this season. So this is the second girl. Second, second girl, girl. you got to have some brains to survive Redneck Island. A lot of people don't think that. Yeah. So did did Cody have all of them in order? It just forgot. It, they, were the they can. in the right order? I didn't know if they were in the actual right order. I didn't pay attention without to that. Without, without, the, without can. the cans? Yeah, yeah without the cans. Yeah, without the cans. Because that was that cost horrible. Him. Yeah. Totally cost him. Um, B Mart, who was friends with Cody, yeah. uh, which Define I thought. Define friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, but she apparently they had a real close alliance and it stemmed back from like maybe a quasi uh, friendship prior to the casting. Quasi. Have, 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 you have. said quasi on Redneck Island after both. <laughs> <laughs> Last night was when we got to see the final four go at it. And yeah. I don't know, you have been the Misty fan from day oh, one. Oh, from day one. Oh. I was so bummed when they yeah. knocked her, when she knocked her off. Yeah. Oh, my God. The minute that challenge showed up, I knew she was gone. She had a huge disadvantage. There was I, no way she was going to win, you know no matter what? who picked her. Well, Lindsay, probably the smartest person on the island. Had it all dialed in, you know, mm -hmm. won the challenge and determined the order. And then, of course, she went gal on gal, guy versus guy. She, she made the right call. So, you know, you got to chalk it up to, you know, mental well. recall. <laughs> you know, she was, she, was a, she was a game competitor. She wasn't the strongest competitor on the island, but everybody, for the most part, liked her. I, I thought she was very charming. I loved her accent. And she hung in there till the yeah. end. And, you know, boy, they, once they get on that diamond, it was all over. Uh, was, I thought she was going to win. I was so bummed. Well, you know, she had, she was the only player that actually had an alliance with everybody. Yep. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. I don't think anyone was in that camp without an alliance to her. So that was right. that was kind of a good strategy. She was just that's ooh. quite clever. Yeah. I was thinking about the trivia contest. All they were doing was picking their opponents. So exactly. She yeah. still would have been the, she the still weak, lost. She still would have been the weakest. Yeah. She was the weakest yeah. competitor yeah. from a physical note on the island. So yeah. I think her, her her fate was sealed going in that final four with that being. She has such a southern drawl. I mean, they damn near yeah. need to subtitle everything she said. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment to Missy, because I, I loved her accent, and I, I thought she did a, a really really nice job on the show, and I really liked her. Oh, good, because she really liked you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the big hug. She did, right? So anyway, yeah. then the next question. <laughs> okay, you know what? We were, we were talking about uh, Cody and, and that he was actually 
probably pegged to win the whole thing. I did a uh, Facebook poll, and I was so surprised that, like, 90% of the people uh, were pegging Cody to win everything. Wow. And they were really, you know, yeah. really surprised that mm -hmm. Lindsay took it. But everyone was like, I want Cody to win. I want Cody to win. So he, he went over really big with the audience. Well <laughs> uh, as far as Cody goes, honestly, I thought he played it really safe. I think, uh, you know, maybe yeah. maybe he was playing it safe because he wasn't real good at strategy. Maybe that was his gameplay. I don't know. Honestly, I think he is the only person on the island who never lied about their oh. um, alliances. Yeah, oh, that's even right. at the end. Yeah, you're right. Bucket because clearly he was one of the most edited, you know, contestants. I mean, we saw Bucket through the entire time. Uh, he made really good television. He definitely uh, was a flip flopper as far as uh, the way he expressed himself. Which, you know, I got to tell you, there was a couple times where I thought maybe, uh, you know, he shouldn't be so mean. I thought there was a couple times he was mean. I thought he was mean uh, when Travis came back from an elimination. I thought Candy. he was mean. Rick, he. What Who was he, our guest that said that he was Candy. a little bit Candy. mean? Candy. Candy. Yeah, Candy. yeah. It said he was mean. I did uh, come around the last episode when he called home. Oh, me too. That yeah. phone call. You know when he made that call home? I, yeah. I, I, I what, felt, what did he say? Every day when he looks in the mirror, that's the, that's the character he's playing. I think yeah, that's, there you go. that's what I said. No, yeah. there was a come to Jesus meeting with myself and Travis, which was not aired. And if uh, you were to see that, oh. you would see the fear of God in that man's eyes. <laughs> Love it. And that's Can all I, I will say about it? that. You always have to consider the source. Of course. So you can see course. where his story is coming from and, and what the rest of the cast thought about him. Yeah, yeah. What I just said, and, and I'll leave it at that. So. Uh, I, I, with all that being <laughs> said, I always, when we go into any one of these seasons, and hopefully we go into season four, I want to lead these guys into a, a great season that they have a lot of fun. They're in yeah. a competitive environment. Yeah. We get good entertaining TV, and they each get a fair shot at 100 grand. So mm -hmm. to, with that being said, I wish Travis all the luck in the world and whatever he's doing, and that's all I got to say about that. Right. Interesting, because I was live tweeting last night, and you had a lot of people pulling for Lindsay, and Bucket had a lot of fans, because you have people who just want to see <laughs> yeah, Bucket where that money yeah. pay some bills, and you know, because everybody kind of expected Cody to win because of physicality, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, so it, it it shook out very interesting, and of course, you know, I, I knew the outcome. <laughs> and so I'm, 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 I'm tweeting accordingly and reading the tweets, and I think all oh, these people are really invested in, in these. In these, uh, I don't want to say characters; they're really invested in these the people. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, you know, it captured the hearts of a lot of people uh, that yeah. were watching the show. So the most impressive thing in that challenge for me oh, like, was watching Lindsay get hit by that wave. Because her, oh, yeah. I mean, I have, I've been hit by a wave. Uh, I've been hit by a wave, and it knocks you out. I mean, when it's coming from behind you, um, and it just pushes you forward. She got disoriented. Did you see how she was shaking and her legs were? Yeah. I mean, she she didn't even know where the cooler was she when she popped it. it. Yeah, she yeah. did, like, didn't she? Yeah. Is that, did you my see vantage, that? yeah, my vantage point from on the day when we were they were in the contest. You know, I was about. 200 yards away looking uh -huh. through binoculars. I didn't know, you know, oh, yeah. she got knocked for a loop oh, until I saw you. the episode last night and she right. was totally disoriented, uh, working off instincts and just thinking, go for it, don't quit, keep, you must survive, and she did. But it's she did. Cool. They're moving when you on watched here. that, were you like more impressed with Lindsay when you saw her? Well, I was impressed with her from the get go. You yeah. could see that, man, mentally, this this chick was, she's super sharp and a gamer. You yeah. know, she, she got smoked oh, by Woodle and the, uh, right. the tug of war thing, but I mean, everybody. Everybody knew that Lindsay was one of the strongest females, if not well, between her and Woodle, the, the strongest on the island. I'm sure. I mean, it, it was it was so close with, between either one of them, and both of them thought they won. And right. guys, so they were heartbroken, but they were genuinely as happy for Lindsay as anybody could be. They lost fair and square. She was a gamer. She beat them. It was what it was. They had the opportunity, but but make no mistake about it, they were heartbroken. Yeah. When well, we had a couple of beers there on the island, but, but then I was flying home the next day. Now, oh, the, the oh. crew was all going to get together and do the after party, you know, the rap, yeah. the rap party. And, uh, man, I heard it was across the, uh, the the river and to the other part of Mexico. And, mm. man, when it, when it involves getting on a boat to go to a different location to go party, 
I'm not down with that. So I don't know what everybody else did. I took my ass to my room, packed up all my bags, had a couple of beers, and went to bed because I was ready to come back to the United States of America. I mean, we were we filmed right outside of a little village there in Manzanilla, oh. and it was just no. The, the people there are so nice. It's unbelievable. Oh. So I mean, every now and then you get some boats cruising by. It, it, it was funny because we were doing the one, uh, the di the diamond when they run around the. the oh yeah, ring. yeah. And these people would come by in these boats pulling those long banana gimmicks with about 12 people. <laughs> and, of course, that made for some great jokes uh, as they drove by. But then one of them just parked out there. And they're, they're right there on camera. And we're like, Love it. <laughs> i, I got to watch my language. That's why I'm minding this. But it was like, get that you SOB do, out of here. You can do sign language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sign language. What about to answer your question, the people over there were absolutely yeah. wonderful. I love going right. to Mexico. <laughs> Correct. And then when it comes out on TV, we get to laugh our asses off and enjoy the process. It's a win-win situation. Right. No one has died yet during the filming of Redneck Island. That's yeah. the bottom line. I would sit up and I would sit in my room for hours with a calligraphy yes. pen. Right, and y'all didn't even know I knew what calligraphy was. Yeah. We just learned something worth the day here your on after bus. <laughs> <laughs> Next year I'll probably write them left-handed <laughs> just to change it up a little bit. We'll be watching uh, for sure. I might write next year's in Morse code. <laughs> Catfish, talk to me. Catfish with a name like catfish, you got to stay away from hooks and nets. <laughs> catfish, what'd you think about this season? Um, I completely agreed with Liz. I love the development and character. Um, you kind of go into the show not really knowing who they are, and and it's just what I love so much more about Redneck Island than Survivor. And it, and I think it's that redneck culture. They open up to each other. They really aren't creating a shell. They're not hiding. I mean, there is some gameplay, but they're not like trying to purposely stab people in the back like pretending someone else they really do go instantly from a static character to a dynamic character like from the first episode and i just love that i love how open they are well that's interesting angelina you come from the streets you come from the city <laughs> you come from the world there is no pity bam bam it's a wrestling jam come on ladies give us a hand that's an inside joke between me and ellie here <laughs> Angelina, what did you enjoy about this season? Because, you know, knowing you like I, I, we don't know each other very well, but I wouldn't just think that you would be a Redneck Island demographic type person. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been watching since season one. Yep. I have been a fan of Redneck Island from the get-go. And what hooked me and what hooked my family was um, the casting, actually. We've watched Survivor for 10 years, and it was just a fun way to watch people play out these challenges authentically, keeping within like who they are, like you were saying, Jacob, mm -hmm. as a person. Um, I got to fall in love with these people with Survivor. I don't feel that way because it's so manipulative and it's so yeah. backstabbing that I want to engage. When I'm watching TV, I want to engage. I want to root for someone. I want to I want to see people flying in the air screaming. That, <laughs> that goes over big with me but, whenever you launch people. And, and I, I didn't want to, to take over and host the show, but to your point, you just, uh -huh. as far as it being engaged and, yeah. and, and learning the, the who these people are, when I first showed up and I've seen these people for the first time, I'm like, mm, these people are a little bit different because this was a younger crowd than we had on the first two mm -hmm. seasons. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, I, you know, I don't know if I'm getting these cats too much. I'm not feeling them yet. Obviously, they grew on me big time yeah. uh, in, in a real fast uh, uh, way. But I, I enjoyed identifying with them and seeing what they're all about, what they're made of, who they are, and how they compete. You know, this was uh, the casting in season three was a little different than the casting in one and two, where I saw a younger group of people. They were younger. Uh, more athletic, more fit. Um, I would like to see more Woodles, personally, because she's so dynamic as yeah. a character. I'm like, I'm not interested if you're fit and you can do these challenges. I'm interested in who you are, and I just want to engage with. I'm and I love learning more about redneck culture. I mean, I come yeah. from the city. I come from Las Vegas. Not. Oh, I thought you were really... going to do the rap. I come yeah, I from the city. Oh, Who's going there? Come, come over to my parents' house. I thought you were <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Um, you know, I was born and raised in Vegas. I, whenever I go visit places, it's other cities, Europe, all that stuff. And. You know, sometimes I honestly forget. You know, back when this great country was founded, 1776.
are and when they're casting these cats i mean they're looking high and low and they're looking for posers so you know oh. you get a lot of people who just want to be on tv right. yeah. and they'll sort through that and you've got to go through interview process after process and skype and, and all those stuff to make sure you were tried and true and this is no bs it's yeah. not an can't have any fear. I after Lindsay won, I went back online and I looked at her bio because I was so impressed with her. And it, you know, I I, I re remembered that she was 29 years old, that yeah. she was a former correctional officer. Oh uh, yes, we brought that up the first yeah, time. Didn't yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And so I'm like thinking, ah, this is a smart lady. Um, how redneck is she? She talks a lot about hunting and fishing, but when I saw her, I thought maybe out of all of them, she seemed the least redneck. Well, with that being said, uh, just your your level of redneckicity <laughs> <laughs> does, does, does not mean that you cannot be refined, highly intelligent, and polished. Right. Redneck. I mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What do we mean? So, yeah, I mean, no, you know, so no, she, she's she's very smart, very well well spoken, yeah. articulate eloquent all that stuff and and uh you know when i looked at her background because i you know when yeah. i everybody comes to the island i look to see what everybody does i'm thinking okay now this this young lady's going to have a mental advantage just because of what she does for a living Do she did so good at the up a really good point because swear I thought that I thought the game changed in that tub when Lindsay yeah. realized she that was, it was a red can. Smart were, oh, I wouldn't have yeah. realized that. So quick, man. Wow, that was so good. quick. Again, well, I was watching from 200 red. yards away and I couldn't read her lips with my binoculars. And so when I was watching last night, I was just like, that's badass. <laughs> <laughs> Um, some of the best quotes came from Lindsay last night. I was so proud of her because she was so overwhelmed with the fact that she was the only girl against these guys. I mean, it really took her, like, it was so important for her yeah. when she won that to, to reiterate how much that Went and it was two strongest them. guys, she yeah, said. Yeah. yeah. So here's a quote from her. She says, I might be a girl and they might be stronger than me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're tougher than me. And I'm like, wow, I love the way her mind thinks because mm -hmm. she was she was really invested uh, in be, doing the very best she could. And she had said when she won the hundred thousand dollars that it's not it doesn't feel as good as the fact that she got to be Bucket and Cody. Right. Remember that? Well, her. She's a gamer, and she she you know, everybody was there to win, but she really uh, was focused. I went there and hung out with them as it showed there, uh, you know, last on last night's episode, and I went with the jar moonshine, some beer, yeah. and <laughs> they all had a little bit to drink, and she probably had you know barely barely because yeah. she was thinking. Mm -hmm. Hey, right. next let day we're drunk. going for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't don't yeah. let those guys get hammered. So and smart. I'm gonna maintain and chill. Sitting here with a panel of experts who've been oh. watching the season. So, what would you guys like to see different that we didn't do this year or the seasons past? Ooh, I want. What I, I think would be really cool is I've, I've seen, I really, first of all, kudos to having bathrooms there and, a, you know, oh. a bar, right, and beds oh. to sleep on. I mean, I'm glad we're not Those watching are cool. These are interesting yeah. concepts, and you guys yeah. presented me a bunch of concepts last time I was here on the show, but yeah. these are real deal, yeah. authentic rednecks, and we get what we get. I okay, say throw I'm, a couple celebrity rednecks okay. in. Okay. That might be a whole different show. I guess, I, yeah. I guess yeah. we <laughs> or, or to y'all's point, uh, you know, last time I was here, we get a Another couple of seasons, and we do the All Star right. yeah, you know, Redneck right. Island yeah. Yeah, yeah. term, and, and, and anybody of any race, color, creed can be a redneck. It's mm -hmm. simply oh. the way I explain it: a person who lives or loves the, the outdoor lifestyle. And again, most of these people on the first three seasons have been cast in the, the south, southeastern parts of the states. You know, I'm looking for for us to get up in, in the New York, in the Midwest, in the, in the heartland, and over to uh, the West Coast. Uh, from all over the United States, and uh, there, there's rednecks everywhere, and so we go through the casting process. I mean, anybody, I, is, anybody is welcome on Redneck Island, as long as you are the real deal. I've loved Redneck Island. I've really learned a lot more about, you know, part of what is my culture, because I am a citizen here of the United States, and I love it. And uh, you know, for the first time in a while, I actually ate a hamburger and remembered that this came from a cow that someone was taking care of on a ranch. Oh. You know, I was just like, hey, you know, there was a, a human being who uh, dealt with this. You know, yeah. think of it just food. Don't even realize where it comes from. It wasn't McDonald's, right? Catfish, the words you, <laughs> catfish, the words you speak are as true now as they were 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a bunch of BS. It doesn't even mean anything. <laughs>
<laughs> That's an old Phil Hartman line I ripped off from Saturday Night Live. Go ahead, uh, Angelina. <laughs> No, I just want you know. I just want to thank you for you know embracing uh, the AfterBuzz you know after shows that we've enjoyed you coming in and chatting with us, and we look forward to doing it again. And for those of you who want to experience Steve Austin and further re you know get connected with him, don't forget he does have a podcast that airs twice a week called the Steve Austin Show on Podcast One. Make sure you listen to it because it's actually a hoot. It's hilarious. He has great guests. Great guests. <laughs> As she's a guest. Go ahead. Uh, All right. So, and yes, great guest. And um, anyway, I will turn it over to you. Where can they find you on social media? You can media? find me on Twitter at Steve Austin BSR. The BSR stands for Broken Skull Ranch. Oh. You can find me on the BrokenSkullRanch.com on my website. You can listen to the Steve Austin Show at PodcastOne.com and iTunes. And that's all I got to say.